try this. <laughs> Alright, of course I'm going live and the camera fell, so let's try this out really quickly. Alright, hello everyone. Alright, so no chat until the lesson's over, so it's kind of like, okay, there we go. Sorry about the rough start. I'll back up here. <laughs> Alright, so a little different angle, but hopefully you can see my face. Sorry, my, I had a lot of technical issues uh, today. Hello. Alright, so really quickly, all right, everything seemed to have stabilized. Um, today on um, Stitch Method Live, we're just going to talk about um, what some of the Grateful Dead fans know as the Dark Star Jam. And for anyone who, um, you know, isn't into the Grateful Dead, that's fine. Um, but you want to be able to take, ha have a good, like, jam uh, on a different kind of sound. This is a kind of an interesting lesson. Um, so the chat will be off for a little bit while I talk, and then we'll have a Q&A session afterwards, and I'll let you know when that is. All right, so um, the Dark Star Jam. You know, um, last, actually yesterday, I was having a conversation with one of my students about the Dark Star Jam, and we were, we were talking about all the different aspects of it and uh, what it consists of. And I had to sit and I had to listen and I had to play, and I had a cool revelation. So really quickly, uh, we've talked about Mixolydian jamming before, and uh, Dark Star in case you, ha you haven't heard it, it always starts off with a very um, unique style jam. And that this is what this is about. So let's let's get right to it. Uh, the basis is that it's an A Mixolydian jam. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining in. All right, so what does that mean? Well, uh, Bob Weir, or Bobby, is going to be playing some sort of A7 um, all over the neck. And... What that does, first of all, is it sets up tone, like a tonal center around like this A mixolydian, which is an A chord with a flat seven. And Jerry Garcia and any normal guitar player, you know, we, we think that we would um, structure an A mixolydian uh, type of scale around this. But to be honest, what happens is he, it, it kind of is, but he does something very unique. So I want to talk to that. So if we have an A7, usually um, an, a seventh chord indicates the fifth chord of a key. And if you're wondering what key that is, well, uh, D. Okay, the key of D major, the five is an A, so D, G, and A. And um, that that five chord going to play as a seventh. So what that means is uh, we have this A seventh jam. Uh, it's in the key of D, and we should be using a D major scale to help um, guide this along. Now, a D major scale is the same exact thing as an A mixolydian. It's just a D major scale starting on number five. Mm. But that's not what Jerry does. Kind of. What Jerry Garcia does is really cool. Is he plays an E Dorian. Now, before your head starts spinning, I'll let you know something. It's all the same. If you look at the key of D, we have a D, an E, an F sharp, a G, an A, a B, and a C sharp. Did I do that right? Yeah. Okay. I'm tired. <laughs> all right. So, D is number one. E is number two. And we can keep going. And A is number five. So, it would be A mixolydian. You could have D major, but right in here, number two is E, E Dorian. Now, why are we thinking E Dorian instead of A Mixolydian? And this is the cool thing. Now, for all of you who are here or watching, again, my most underrated video on my channel, so go watch it, is The Power of the Five. The, five, the fifth note in music is the most tension you can get away from a one without it sounding too tense. Uh, the flat five is the most tense, but let me tell you, it sounds way too tense. So the five. So if you look, we have an A7. So what does Jerry Garcia do? Well, he uses the right scale and the right key. He uses a D major, but he mentally makes it an E Dorian. Why? Because E is the five of A. Now you're probably like, what? Now if you look, A, you have A, D, and E. Now what happens is he makes home on the E when we're playing an A, and what that does is gives you an extra level of tension against the A7 chord. So here's my loop of an A7 chord, and if I play a D major scale, it sounds okay. If I play an A mixolydian scale, which is a D major is just starting on an A, but what Jerry, Gardia, Jerry, Gardia, Jerry Garcia does is he takes the D major scale and starts on the E, And he makes the E home. And what that does is every time he touches the E, it adds a resolve because the E is in the A7 chord, but also it's it's the 5 of the A. 
And so you have this mixolydian jam built on these layers of fifths, and using your E Dorian, which I, to I totally understand is the same as D and A mixolydian, but just where home is makes all the difference. So I'm gonna try and do this. So here's my E Dorian. Bobby Weir is playing the A7, and it gives this awesome Mixolydian jam a new feel that is kind of unique to Dark Star. So now, one quick thing before we end this quick little lesson on jamming onto the Dark Star jam, is that in this scale is a G note. Now, why am I point pointing out the G? Well, what makes an A7 an A7 is the note G. So, you can land on E, which has a sense of home, and this, like, tension. And you can land on a G, and that will help bond with the um, A7 chord. So you have two like landing options that are going to give some good flavor. The E and the G. So when we're doing this in E Dorian, scale to kind of move your dark star jam along. Now there's a lot more that goes in the dark star jamming with your bass player and everybody communicating, but that's the general feel of it. You're using a seventh chord and you're playing the right scale for it, but you're starting on the five of that chord. Really interesting stuff. Really, really interesting. So in case you're not into the grip of that, I apologize, but this is a, a good little trick to get that sound for the dark star jam. I will stop this. Uh, the official Lesson is over. Look at that. Only a six minute lesson, just how to handle a Dark Star Jam. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to come over here, turn my chat on. Let's see without knocking my phone over because that was the hard. Here we go. Chat is on. And here we go. All right. Hey, everybody. The chat is on. And now I'll answer QA. Um, sure did a lot of thinking. Who could do? This stuff is gold. I'm glad you liked it. Okay. So, um, yeah, I, you know. Everybody, you know, I feel bad if, if you're not to the dev. The Dark Star definitely has a cool, a cool, um, uh, it really, hey, hey, has a cool sound, all right? Now, there was more to do that Jerry does, but, I mean, I'm not going to be sitting here for an hour and a half going through it. That's the main feel of it. Hello from Scotland. Oh, great lesson. I'm glad you enjoyed it, okay? So, but again, if you have your your own band, right, and you just, you know, and everyone's like, oh, I don't like the Grateful Dead, just be like, hey, you know, play an A7, let's try this out, and they're going to be like, oh my god, that's awesome, and you can kind of laugh in your head and be like, well, oh, thanks, Stitch, but, um, Let's see, I'm reading, can you share your amp settings for the clean sound on line six? Yeah, I'll share it really quickly. Um, I have a line six Spider 4 15 watt practice amp, and I'll tell you right now what my settings are. Um, they're very, very simple. If you, the, the bass is set to about 1030, like 1030. The mids are right at the middle, and the treble is about one o'clock, and that's my favorite setting. Kind of smooths out uh, the sound. I like a nice middle range so that I can kind of control my dynamics with some bass and palm muting. So E Dorian over A is not a mixolydian. No, it, it is. Okay, so Michael just asked, is E Dorian over A not a mixolydian scale? It is. It totally is. It's an A mixolydian scale. But you're rerouting where your tonal center is as a lead guitar player so that um, so that when you land on your home, which is the E, it's the five of the A chord. It kind of fits, but also creates some tension. Um, as for Jerry, I saw a thing. As for Jerry's chromatic stuff, um, Jerry, there, there's one thing that Jerry does. First of all, he, Jerry's a master of guitar, okay? So, like, <laughs> that is, without a doubt, the truest. But, like, one thing that, that he does a lot, and I'll show this to you, is, like, if you have a major arpeggio, let's see, a B major arpeggio right here. There's a B, and you have a 1, 3, 5, and this is similar to, like, my um, Sultans of Swing video, like... What he's going to do, and he does this a lot, is he'll play the 1, the 3, the flat 4, the 5, the... The one, the, the flat, oh my god, the one, the three, the four, the flat five, and the five. He, he loves bridging the three and the five with the four, the flat five, and the five. He'll even do the minor third. So, I mean, the thing is, his, his chromatic stuff goes from one target note to the next. This guitar is very handsome. This is the, the Deadbolt from Fred, and I really, really enjoy this. I, the more and more I play this, this thing is outstanding. Um... Uh, I will never understand modes. Yes, you will understand modes, Don. Uh, G sounds right. Take me there. Whole thing. It's been cool. The middle sounds. Uh, I'm trying to read fast. Uh, what, um, 
I, I couldn't read them, sorry. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I went, went, went too fast. Uh, then you're overthinking modes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then that, that, right. No offense, Don. It's just the mode, a mode is a major scale. You can start on number two, number three, number four, number four, number four, number five, number six. I'm tired. I'm so sorry. All right, so what other questions do we have? Uh, let's, uh, you know, we can talk about the great flip. We can talk about anything. Um, are you guys having a good day? Any questions about music theory? I have no chat right now, so I'm just going to sit here. I, I don't see it. Oh, here we go. What do you call it? E Dorian, starting on the E after the root. Hold on. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on. That was Mike Shaw, one of my men. Here we go. What do you call it? Uh, e Dorian, when you start on the E after the root note itself, or is it D Dorian, starting with E? No, it's E Dorian. Okay, so D major is D major, and when you start on the second note, Mike, uh, Dorian means two. So if I say blank Dorian, that means that you're starting on the second note of a major scale. Um, what is it when you sharp the seventh of Dorian? Uh, ooh, I don't know, what that is, a major sixth? Um, is that, man, you got me there, let me think. I think it's a unique scale. Uh, let's see. Oh. I don't know, I'm just tired. I don't know, I'm sure there's an answer to that. Um, what, is, what is a guitar? I have no idea. I have no idea what a guitar is. <laughs> Look, okay. Scale practice, routine lesson. Uh, what is the best way to not sound like you're playing a scale? Oh, great. What's the best way to sound like you're not playing a scale? All right. Let's talk about musicality. Um, melodic, oh, melodic minor. Sorry, right? Yeah, melodic minor uh, or harmonic minor. Those are the two scales that are breakaway from modes, and my brain's always like, oh. But I don't, not that I don't believe in those scales. I don't use those scales a lot in my playing. But yeah, melodic minor, right? Sharp seven because that's six. Anyway, the question was, um, the question was, how do you get away from playing scales and make some music. So this is a real conversation here. You know, I had a guy who uh, emailed me and I had a chance to talk to him and it was really cool. And I want to let you know something, which I, I don't know if I do a good job of doing this on my channel, um, <laughs> which is all the music theory that I teach, all of it, it, when it comes to the time of battle, you, you A, need to practice it so much that you can forget about it. Um, uh, uh, listen, but never going to reply. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry, Robert. I don't. I get. I, I get like a hundred emails a day, and if, if yours got buried, I apologize. Uh, email me again, uh, or yeah, or email me again. Um, which is when 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 the time comes for you to be soloing, you need to have practiced so much that you can really disregard the music theory aspect and do something that you need to do as a guitar player, which is speak through your guitar. Okay. So now, let's talk about this. So let's just take. Let's just take that. Um, that uh, Dark Star Jam. So here's an A7. Alright, so now, feel good about it. Alright, so now, so here we go. Now, I can play my E Dorian. Now, I'm gonna forget about all my special notes, and I'm gonna listen, um, I'm gonna listen to what I'm doing. Now, the, what, what I tell my students when we do this is, you have to pretend you can't speak. And what you have to try, what you have to try to do, uh, I did, I tried the Dorian Sharp 7 once, I, uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try it, okay, <laughs> but what you have to do is listen to what you're doing, and you have to first start playing with your direction. Do I want to go high, or do you want to go low? And then once you start moving, when you play something, because I know the E Dorian's going to work, okay, I know it, I, we don't have to guess at that anymore. When you find something you like, you repeat it as if you're having a conversation, as if you said something and you're trying to say it again. So like... So the most important piece that you have to try and do is forget about your scale work. Um, the best way you can explain it at once is answer, call and answer. Okay, yeah. Well, that's, th there's a lot to calling and answering. Here, you're just speaking through your guitar and you're learning about your direction and you're paying attention to your guitar and your notes as if you're speaking. Take, take the note names out, take the technical out. You have to practice what I do call beckoning. You want to beckon. You want to speak. Once you know a scale works, feel free to try. Uh, to tr um, <laughs> that's awesome. Call and 
response has a different type of feel. That's making like a call, and then the response. I'm talking about speaking in sentences and going. Follow your intent, forget about the theory behind your scale, and try and say something. But the most important thing is you want to listen to what you're doing. The biggest miss for every guitar player, me included, is when you're learning and, and, and trying to absorb all this stuff is we forget to listen to what's happening. So here we go. So, so what I'm trying to say here is you want to listen to what you're doing, you want to try and speak, you want to repeat things, you want to experience the music as if it's coming out of you and you can't uh, for multiple scales. Okay, so this guy asked this question nonstop. What is, a, what is a good scale practice? Keep on practicing your scales and find a backing track. Say, say you, ha you want to practice your major scale, A major backing track. Practice your major scale and know it first physically and then practice speaking through it. Minor scale, B minor back and track. Find a good track you like and then do -do -do -do, practice your minor scale. But at, at one point you want to kind of forget, you know, the technical and the theory behind it and you want to trust in that footprint. You got to trust in the footprint that you're doing and just practice speaking through direction and through the sound you're making and the breath. And, and that's the most important thing, breath and phrasing. You know, those phrasing videos I have are, are there to help you do new things. So the newest thing that you can possibly do is, um, yeah, YouTube backing tracks, exactly. You can use, you, every backing track exists on YouTube. Um, so the one thing that beginners or intermediates who are trying to do something um, <laughs> is you want to, you, yeah, you land, on the, you land on the right notes, trust in your scale, and practice like breathing with your your um with your direction and when you do something you like you repeat it and it's kind of like having a conversation like when you're when I'm teaching you know there is there is a very um true way I teach where I kind of like repeat things in an order like you know here's exhibit A and then exhibit B has a little bit of exhibit A where I have a little repetition and B ha exhibit C has a little bit of B in it and and the human ear likes a conversation you know what you want to use the force you don't want to be hopping around the scale you want to stay close you want the words that you're saying to make sense as if they're there they're, there's an order to them Notes that you choose are going to blend back and forth with each other. See? You want them to be close. Oh, I'm going to stop there. Okay, I'll stop talking. All right, so uh, in the key of A minor, what scales can I play? Oh, uh, well, hold on. That was a good question, but I missed it. Can I get that? Okay, in the, if the key is A minor, what scales can I play? An E scale because it's a fifth or one of the notes. Well, okay, in the key of A minor, so let's just talk about that. Uh, do you have any diminished chord lessons? Uh, my stash lesson is all about diminished chords. Oh, oh my God. In the key of A minor, um, okay, so E minor, oh, a, sorry, A minor. A minor means a couple things. That uh, if it's in the key of A minor, that um, y usually your first chord is going to be an A minor. All right, okay, so the obvious uh, scale to use would be an A minor scale. Now, um, if you wanted to build tension, and this is going to be the hard thing to understand, I want to make sure this, this, this is like the dark star method, what I talked about earlier. Well, you, you want to, okay, A minor is what? It's C major. Okay, all right, A minor is C major. If you want to build the mo most amount of tension in a jam, well, what's the five of A? E, okay, so where is an E in C major? This is, a, this is like a mode thing, C major, D, Dorian, E, Phrygian. So now, you know, A minor and C major are the same scale. So you can use your A minor, you can use your C major scale, whatever's comfortable with, but you just want to focus on your A's, your E's to land on. Um, it's going to be an A minor scale, but all you're doing is, is forcing an extra layer of tension by bringing the five is home. So I'd recommend, and that, that's, that's, the, that, that's how easy it is. It's not that complicated. You play your A minor scale, you focus on your E's as home, it becomes an E Phrygian. So, that's the most important thing. But if 
if you have an A minor like jam, you know there's a difference where you have an A minor jam, we do this, we're like, here, um, volume, it's always good, right? Like, like, okay, if I actually hit my pedal, like. If you have an A minor groove, I usually like the Dorian on top of just an A minor groove. Now, if the chords are moving around, you're kind of effed. You're going to be locked to a, a key. But if you have an A minor jam, the Dorian is my favorite because that's six. I love me some Dorian. Okay, so I uh, hope that made sense. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm making you hungry at the jam talk. All right, so uh, which one's my fr this one? <laughs> um, uh, that was over an A. That was over an A minor. That was a, Dor a, a Dorian harmonic minor. If the five chord is major, if the five chord. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Bam! That was good. That was from my blues lesson. Sorry, I had to calculate that. Man, so cool. Hit one of your live, even though oh, you're in Italy. I mean, it's one. <laughs> Hello, Italy. It's 1.51 in the morning. Go to bed. I'm not that special. Um, this is a beautiful axe. Again, this is the uh, this is the deadbolt from Fred Instruments. This thing is like cream of the crop. I really, really love it. I, it's funny because like, I don't know, the more guitar like sits in your home, it becomes like part of you more. Uh, I am very... T hey, man. I am very tan. I was out in the sun mowing the lawn. And let me tell you, the sun. I hate it. Do you think you'll ever do anything really... Yeah, okay, so let's talk about John Mayer. Let's talk about an In the Mind of John Mayer or uh, a Masters of Melody John Mayer. I need suggestions. Okay, like, I, I mean, as in, like, do you want me to do, like, a solo that he does? Um, yes, oh, it's Tom, 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 Tom Spallone, how you doing? I did, I wanted the email, I got your MP3, thank you so much. And Tom, if um, you don't mind, I'm going to chop it just to keep it short for the intro, but thank you so much for your effort. Tom Spallone, um, who is on here, um, I don't know if you saw it, a long time ago, he made a remix of my intro riff, and I loved it so much, I'm just going to actually use that in my, in my, um, my intro videos like as music because it's just so good and I think I, I, I have to pay homage to you you know thank you so much for that so um ooh strokes man I haven't listened to strokes for like 20 years that's great um so when it comes to John Mayer you know we can talk John Mayer is an ultimate um an ultimate blues guitar player so you know my blues primer playlist goes over to extent um the mindset that he has uh, my blues masterclass part two coming out soon I promise there's a little hiccup but nothing terrible um now, Jim, John Mayer in the mind of Dead and Company, we can do that, but I, I no offense, I'd rather do Jerry Garcia. Uh, Gravity is a cool song. Um, now, we can talk about the riff, we can talk about a solo. So, like, in, in the comments below, when this goes up, um, you know, uh, <laughs> submerged that like button. Thank you, man. Um, what's up, guys? Gravity is good. John Mayer, Gravity, dancing, uh, uh, slow dancing. My, my man, my man, Sean Daniel, has a slow dancing in the burning room, I think, tutorial, riff deconstruction on that. So... Is, what's my dog doing? I think my dog is snoring. It's scary. Um, Queens. Yes, Don. That's the song I was looking for. Queen Queens of California. Yes. Somebody emailed me. Thank you. And I listened to that. And the solo in it, I think, is spectacular. Um, some fruity drumming of dark. <laughs> uh, his fast drumming. Uh, his fast drumming. I think. You know, well, his fast drumming is, is just fast drumming from the wrist. I, mean, I can try and do it, but I do not claim to be a fast guitar player. Um, but I'm still having trouble making minor pentatonic musical. Any advice for beginners? Okay, so there's another, um, now that comment just came in was any way to make the minor pentatonic more musical. Um, well, I'll tell you this, the minor pentatonic, you know, let's just talk about that never lost pentatonic before we get going here. Um, yes, Sean, Sean Daniel is a very talented. Uh, him, and I, him and I have just had the fortunate experience of meeting each other in this universe in the same town and uh, we, we get along great and, and we teach and it's awesome. Um, so, Here's the deal. The Never Lost system came... I'll tell you all about the Never Lost pentatonic, okay? Um, it came to me one day, and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool, right? That's that's a pretty cool thing, and then I started teaching it, and one guy who I, t who I taught was like, dude, I've taken, like, hundreds of lessons, and nobody's ever explained that. And I was like, oh, cool, all right. And then I, I started, like, researching it, and I was like, yeah, nobody's done it. Let me throw it up there. So I threw it up on YouTube, and um, it, it kind of, like, blew up, and it was featured on all this all these websites, which I can't thank you enough for, but I will say there's an Achilles heel. There is an Achilles tendon, or Achilles heel, to the Never Lost, which is, the Never Lost is just about the map, all right? So, like, don't 
play the never loss. Don't play the never loss thinking that it's going to make everything sound good. That is the map, the spinal cord of how to put your your shapes and boxes together and how to transverse them. When it comes to being musical with with a, with a minor pentatonic, you do want to watch. I, I will tell you, watch my Hey Joe phrasing video. Watch my David Gilmore video. Um, watch what else is there? Uh, watch my Little Wing video. Um, those those videos have the idea of, okay, you're going to use a pentatonic, but you're going to bind with the music. A pentatonic is the best scale in the world to solo with, but you have to kind of know the rules. And just like I said earlier, about 15 minutes ago, you have to kind of close your eyes and listen to what you're doing. All right. Um, yes, it is cool. I love that. I love, uh, Seven, seven notes is too many. Five is good. Um, <laughs> do you know what Jerry used for Ottawa? Yeah, he used, um, oh my God, come on. Um, the Mutron. He used, he used a Mutron and that thing's really expensive. So I do not have it. Um, do a lesson of finger picking stuff. I can do, I can do a lesson of, uh, Mutron. I can do a lesson of finger picking, even though I'm not the best finger picker, I can do it. You know, we can talk about traps some Travis picking. We can talk about the concepts of it because, um, finger picking is great, but it really depends on what your left hand is doing. Um, okay, let's see. Seventies was the best decade for music, in my opinion. You're gonna all laugh at me. Okay, I do like a seventies, but dude, there there are some sick eighties tunes, man. Like eighties, and I'm talking with the synthesizers and the glasses and the faux hawks. Like, there's some good stuff in the eighties too. Okay, I'm just letting you know. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> All right, so I got a couple more minutes before we got to go. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. Uh, is there a reason why, oh, my God, jam with major? Okay, I, that was with you so much. I'm so sorry. I know I look, um, oh, I saw something about, everything's going too fast. I saw something about the pinky. Let's talk about the pinky for a second. And this is, this is where we'll end this, okay? So when we're playing pentatonics down here, okay, um, you know, you have to, uh, you have to use your pinky to get those notes. But when you're in the 10th fret, above the 10th fret, you can use your ring finger comfortably. I, 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 I highly suggest that when you're above the 10th fret, you use your ring first, first finger and ring finger only for the pentatonic, so that the pinky can learn to stretch. The pinky, everybody's pinky is stupid. Hey, Daryl. Hey, Daryl. Everybody's pinky is stupid because we don't we don't use it right. The pinky is really it's not designed. <laughs> the human finger of the pinky is designed to stretch on guitar. No, the the the, the um the responsibility of the pinky is to stretch. So when you're up here and you're playing a pentatonic, you know you need to use it as a stretch. It's a stretcher. Nobody plays pinky just like this. Nobody does like. You know, it's it's a it's a um a finger that does the job when other things are down. So if you want to get better at your pinky, you have to use it correctly, which means it's a stretcher. It has to be stretching and then reaching and then coming down the fretboard. That's it. Uh, <laughs> when you drink tea. Um, hey man. Oh hey, what's up? Uh, can I ask when soloing? Do you pick? Oh my God, hold on. This is. I want to say this. Do you pick a method and stay in it or follow the progression or something? Or is the pentatonic the go to? Ooh, that's a great question, which is that guy just asked, like, what the F are you doing? Okay, so <laughs> when you're soloing, that's the best part. Is Jerry Garcia, any, I'm just using Jerry Garcia because we're talking about Jerry today. Um, any guitar player does have um, a, a wide range of options when soloing. You know, pentatonic, diatonic, what mode, chord tones. And it's, um, it's it's up to you. It's up it's up to you. you. You play what you like, and if you're rehearsing and you don't like it, you don't play it. And if you're rehearsing and you like it, you kind of put in a bag of tricks. So I like doing this. So, you know, I usually have a, a process where I say, you know, start off in the pentatonic, get your bearings, and then try throwing in the diatonic full scale. And if it works, great. And then start hitting your chord tones if you can. You know, so there's this process. I don't know why I'm doing this gesture, but it looks really cool. I like that. Okay, so anyway. Um, <laughs> How to uh, improvise? How to improve strumming? Yeah, yeah, we can do strumming next. I'll, 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 oh, by the way, I don't know if you noticed, there was no stitch method like professional video today because I had a crazy like technical glitch with my audio and my camera, and I just literally almost like smashed everything on my on my chair and walked away. So I'll get back to it less last week. Yeah, I'll do a lesson on my theory um, on rhythm uh, here. What pinky? Uh, why pinky for a bar shape? <laughs> Hold on, I gotta go in two seconds, but this this is all in caps, so it means that they're yelling at me. Why why pinky for a shape bar, not oh okay, <laughs> John Miller asks. All right, so here is it, it's like here's your a shape chord. He just asked like 
A-shaped chord, right? And I use my pinky all the time. I just do this. Why? Because it's comfortable and I can do it. And it exercises your pinky. And that's good. But like, I'll leave you with this. If you ever see the guitar player from Weezer, his hands, his, his hands are so long. It, he can literally play like an A bar chord like this, no problem. But he chooses to use his pinky and it makes me laugh so much. Um, because like, his hands look so squished. But you know, um, this is the way that you want to try so you can use your ring finger and stretch it out. But the comfortable nature for me. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed everything. I tried to address some questions and kind of say them out loud this time so you can see what's going on. I appreciate all of your um, uh, stuff. Uh, is Daryl still here? This is going to be weird. Hey, Daryl, is Daryl still here, my, the, 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 my, my graphics guy? Let's see, I just want to see. Uh, Derek uses Pinky for bar two, yes. Um, sorry, I was going to see if he's still tuning in. Is uh, do, 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 Okay, never mind, I'll, I'll email him. I have a question for him, but since we're live around the world, I'll figure it out. Okay, guys, I'm going to uh, go relax. I've had a long day. and Yes, hey, okay, Daryl. Uh, this is Daryl, right, my uh, graphics guy? Let me make sure. I was thinking this, and I was, I, this is on the live stream. I was going to talk to him in our business meeting. Um, my Stitch Method logo with the orange, can we do one that's like a cool blue that says live so we can have like like Stitch Method, the pre-recorded ones, and then Stitch Method Live, so people can see which one is like the live feeds and which one's not. That's just an idea I have. If you like it, send me an email. That's, <laughs> I'm having a business meeting internationally right now. All right, guys, all of you, um, go practicing. Eyes of the World's gonna be coming to you. Um, I will tell you, I filmed the 22 minute video on Eyes of the World and the whole thing crapped the bed and I was so effing upset. Um, so anyway, so that was, uh, that was a little disappointment to me. All right, so guys, have a great, great week. Um, you guys are all awesome. Keep playing, keep expressing yourself with a little bit of like um, closing your eyes and just playing. And uh, if you want to impress your bandmates with a cool jam, remember, put the Dorian on top of the Mixolydian. Uh, you guys are awesome. Have a great week. I will see you all soon. Rock and roll, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> if this thing ever stops. <laughs>